Lin Mu, stop lazing around we still have a lot of trees left to harvest in today's quota, we barely filled our quota yesterday and I don't want to anger the supervisor again, he will definitely cut our wages this time. Hearing the voice calling him, a youthful-looking boy of about 16 years of age and having short hair turned around towards the man that had just called him. Seeing the man's tense look, the boy gulped and answered. I'm not lazing around Uncle Yuan too, I'm just trying to be careful not to damage the spirit apples while plucking them from the trees. The man named Yuan too, upon hearing the boy's reply, had a tint of annoyance in his eyes as he thought that the boy was merely giving excuses for his slow pace in harvesting the spirit apples from the trees. Remembering yesterday's scolding that he got from the supervisor for being the group leader of the slowest harvesting group out of a hundred this week, he knew that if his group did not exceed their quota that day they will definitely never be able to receive their bonus wages of that week. Hasten your pace and stop giving excuses or you will be the one to bear the penalty that will receive for incomplete work. Not giving the boy another chance to reply, the man walked away to another tree to work. The boy heard Yuan Tu's threat and quickened his pace of plucking the spirit apples from the tree. After that he placed them in his basket and then when the basket was full, he carefully transferred them to the wheelbarrow, which would then be sent to the main collection cart. Spirit apples were the main produce of the northern town, which was rather lucrative and were sent to Wu Lim City, which was the main city. Wu Lim City had four satellite towns, each named according to their locations and each having their own specialty. Spirit apples were very expensive for common peasants, with each apple costing a gold coin, which only the people from the city could afford to buy. While the peasants that harvested them only received four silver coins every day, it would take them nearly a whole month's wages to buy just one, thus they had to be careful not to damage, bruise or scratch the apples as this resulted in the spirit apples slowly losing their spirit chi making them lose value. Two hours later, Lin Mu had done four trips to the cart, emptying his basket along with the others. The wheelbarrow was nearly full when Yuan Tu walked towards the cart and emptied his basket that ended up completely filling the wheelbarrow. Looking at the filled wheelbarrow, Yuan Tu took a breath of relief as the day's quota was finally completed two hours before sundown, which gave them plenty of time to harvest more spirit apples that day. He thought that they may at last get their bonus wages this week. Thinking of this made a slight smile appear on Yuan Tu's face and he looked towards Lin Mu. Looks like you finally picked up the pace, now that we have finished today's quota you can go and send the wheelbarrow to the main collecting cart, the rest of us will continue harvesting. Looking at the heavy looking wheelbarrow Lin Mu furrowed his brows and knew that it will be difficult for him to move it all the way to the collecting cart and would take him at least 45 minutes to come back during which the rest of the five people of the group would be the only ones receiving the higher bonus pay, with him not having him much time to earn his. Uncle Yuan too, this wheelbarrow is very heavy for me, can't you bring it to the main cart? Yuan too had the greed of higher wages in his mind and hence definitely did not want to waste his time in sending the wheelbarrow back. Can't you just do as I asked Lin Mu? If you keep on shirking from hard work you'll never get strong, in the time you spent talking you could have very well been on your way to the collecting cart. Yuan Tu spoke, feeling annoyed. Looking at the annoyed look in Yuan Tu's eyes, Lin Mu knew it would be useless to argue any further and that he would just have to rush back as fast as possible so that he could work more. Having thought of that, Lin Mu started pushing the wheelbarrow towards the location of the collecting cart. Five minutes later Lin Mu started getting tired and was about to slow down his pace when a stone came under the wheelbarrow making it start to tilt. Lin Mu was unable to handle the heavy wheelbarrow and lost control of it, making it fall with a loud noise. With a horrified expression on his face, Lin Mu was left standing, while the other workers heard the voice and gathered around, feeling shocked at the sight of a fallen wheelbarrow. All the spirit apples that were in it were now scattered around in the dirt, with many scratched and damaged. As more and more people gathered, the supervisor seeing the commotion also came over to see what happened and why the peasants were not working. Seeing the supervisor approach made the people quiet down, and they gave way for the supervisor to come. Looking at the debacle in front of him, the supervisor Li Peng was shocked at first, but then anger started to seethe within him. Who is responsible for this mess? Come out now. The surrounding people did not want to get involved, thus they quickly pointed towards the frozen Lin Mu. 
Lin Mu was now even more horrified seeing the supervisor and started to fall in despair. You imbecile do you know what you have done, how big of a loss you've caused, where is your group leader call him? The supervisor shouted with spittle flying all over, which only made the people quickly call over Yuan too quickly. Yuan Tu, who was already on his way to see what had happened, looked at the supervisor's now angry red face, and became pale with fear. He hesitated in approaching him. Look what your group member has done, a whole wheelbarrow's worth of spirit apples are now useless, this is more than a 1,000 gold coins worth of loss. What do you have to say about this, how will this loss be compensated? Upon hearing the supervisor's shout about compensation, Yuan Tu became even more frightened, and his ears were already ringing from the shouting which made it even more difficult for him to talk. I. I. I my lord not all apples are damaged. We can still sell the rest of them, please spare us just this once, we'll never make such a mistake ever again. Li Peng, now calmed down a little bit and glanced at the spirit apples. He saw that some were indeed still redeemable, but the rest were still damaged apples that were worth at least 700 gold coins. With a stern expression he spoke, even if you exclude the apples that are undamaged the loss is still more than 700 gold coins, when the mayor hears about this he will not be happy, you cannot be spared. Li Ping thought about how to compensate for the over 700 gold coins worth of damage. He knew that he'll probably have to dock a whole month's wages from every peasant working here, but it still wouldn't be enough. At this point, he looked at Lin Mu. Every peasant working here will lose one month's worth of wages and compensation for the loss and for the rest of it, as the boy caused this mistake, all his property will be seized and sold off to pay for it. Hearing the supervisor's order each and every person turned pale with despair and then started to feel angry against Lin Mu as it was his mistake which had just caused them to lose everything they worked for that entire month. Lin Mu now having heard the order had tears in his eyes as he knew he would be losing everything he had, even the house that his parents had left him when they died last year. Guards, seize this boy and his group leader, go to the boy's property and seize all valuables in the house, then throw the boy out of the town, then bring the group leader to the square for ten lashes. One of the guards seized Lin Mu and others restrained Yuan too and then took them away for their punishments. Yuan Tu had a hateful look on his face as he looked at Lin Mu and gritted his teeth, swearing to have revenge on the kid. The other peasants also looked at Lin Mu with hateful gazes. Lin Mu tried to struggle but there was no way he would be able to overpower a guard having the strength of sixth stage of body tempering, he himself was only at the second stage of body tempering as he had never actually trained properly before with a tempering technique. The guards dragged Lin Mu to his house and ransacked the house, taking everything of value in there. Though there was not much there to begin with as most of the valuables had been sold off in exchange for medicine when Lin Mu's mother fell sick during the last year's plague. The only thing worth something was the house itself and the land that it was built on. Lin Mu watched as his whole world was ripped apart and started tearing up and sniffling. After checking that all valuables have been taken, the guards sealed the courtyard entrance of the house and went back to report to the supervisor, while one guard brought Lin Mu to the edge of the town and threw him away and then turned back to head to his post. Lin Mu lied there on the ground for hours before he got up, no longer crying. He had a dull look in his eyes and walked aimlessly out of the town towards the forest. After walking for an hour, he found himself in front of the apple tree he used to play at when he was a child. There was a small stream nearby where he would catch fish and play in the water with his friends. Now tired and exhausted, he sat below the tree with his back to the tree and fell asleep under the night sky and the moon hiding in the clouds. In space, millions of kilometers away from the world Lin Mu lived in, a gray orb of light was traveling at a great speed. It was as if it was fading in and out from reality itself, passing through obstacles, like asteroids, as if they were air. After an unknown amount of time, it approached a blue planet, eventually falling into its atmosphere. The ground was becoming closer and closer, small continents expanded to a vast length, mountains rose to a great height. In the end, the gray orb collided with an insignificant tree, somehow only shaking it entirely. The orb then faded away, leaving behind a rusty gray ring embedded halfway through the trunk. In his sleep, Lin Mu found himself in a dark place. He could not see anything at all. 
Strangely, he could feel his arms and legs, even touch them, but he still could not see them. Where am I? Is this a dream? I've never had a dream like this ever before. He walked around in the darkness for what could be a few minutes or possibly days, having no method to measure the time. Eventually, he woke up because of a sharp pain at the top of his head. Looking around, he found himself lying below a familiar apple tree, where a small apple had fallen beside him. The sky was slowly getting brighter, and the sun hidden below the horizon had not risen yet. Huh, looks like this apple fell on my head and woke me up. That's strange though, this apple is still unripe, why did it fall? Standing up, Lin Mu stretched his arms and looked up at the sky, estimating that it's likely around 5 a.m. He went up to the small stream to drink some water and quenched his thirst. After quenching his thirst, he felt his stomach groan with hunger. I have to find something to eat. It would be no use going back to the town as I don't have any money left, the guards took away the last of which I had. Guess I'll head back to the tree and get some apples. Walking back to the apple tree, Lin Mu looked for a ripe apple to eat. Spotting a few with his eyes, he began to climb the tree. Pulling himself up on a branch, Lin Mu then plucked some apples. While getting down, Lin Mu spotted a glint on the trunk of the tree. Getting closer to inspect what it was, he found a curved rusty metallic piece stuck to the bark. He tried pulling it out but it seemed it was not only stuck, but very stuck. Putting his whole strength into pulling it out, it finally worked with the consequence of falling off the tree from loss of balance. Looking at the object in his hands, he found that it was actually a rusty gray ring like one could find in a flea market. The ring had a peculiar design, having five small spurs equidistant from each other rising from one side of the ring. I don't think I've ever seen this before here on the tree. Did someone put it there? I may as well keep it, maybe I can sell it in the town later on. Unaware of its origins, Lin Mu decided to put the ring on his right middle finger. As soon as he put on the ring, a chill went through him, followed by a warmth spreading from the ring to all over his body. As the warmth spread, Lin Mu felt energized and every cell in his body filled with strength. The process lasted for ten minutes, after which Lin Mu opened his eyes and analyzed his body. What was that? I feel stronger, much more than ever before. Did I just break through to the third stage of the body tempering realm? Wanting to test out his strength, Lin Mu found a rock the size of two fists. He put down the rock and punched it with all his strength. Only a slight chip fell off the rock, leaving some cuts on Lin Mu's fist. Arg! Damn, that hurt like hell. Why did I think this would be a good idea to test out my strength? But how did I break through and increase my strength, is it due to the ring? Could it be a treasure? Observing the ring, Lin Mu still thought that it looked the same as before, a rusty gray color except that the ring now fitted him more snugly, as if it was made for him. Lin Mu's stomach grumbled again, reminding him of his hunger. He had already plucked the apples from the tree, so he got some dry twigs and branches to cook the apples knowing that eating them straight as they are, even if they are ripe, is not an option as they were very tart to eat. It would just leave him with his teeth hurting. Still, to cook the apples, Lin Mu required a pot, so he decided to go to his father's old hunting shack to find one. Perhaps he could also use it to solve his current homeless situation. He could not always sleep under a tree in the open sky, could he? Winter would be arriving in a month, thus he would definitely need a roof over his head and some warm clothes. Walking a few hundred meters towards the forest, Lin Mu found the old abandoned hunting shack. The shack was small and looked old and damaged by the elements. Walking in, Lin Mu saw a few pieces of furniture, a couple of planks used to sit and also used as a bed, a small table, and a shelf. At the edge, he saw a small stove built with stone, and beside it was a small pot. He placed the branches and twigs that he collected and started a fire. He added water to the pot and placed the apples in it, which he broke into chunks, after which he let it cook. Ten minutes later the apples were cooked and palatable, no longer as sour as before. Lin Mu let the pot cool down before eating the cooked apples. After filling his belly, he felt satisfied and focused his thoughts back on the mysterious ring. 
As Lin Mu focused on the ring, he felt a similar chill going through his body again and found his vision fading into darkness. Lin Mu found himself in a dark place once again, but this time he can see his body clearly even though there was no source of light present there. Lin Mu, clearly having no idea how he ended up there, felt scared and couldn't help but ask himself if he was back in a dream. How do I get out of here? Should I just wait till I wake up naturally? Since I'm here, I may as well walk around and check this place out. After being in the dark place for a couple of minutes now, Lin Mu's eyes start to adapt to the darkness and could see things more clearly. Looking around in all directions, he found a pale glow of lights coming from one position and decided to walk towards it, trying to find out what it was. While walking towards the pale glow, Lin Mu observed some changes to the dark sky. What are those faint streaks of light in the sky? I've never heard of phenomena like this before, guess I'm definitely in a dream. There were silver and gray faint streaks of light in the sky, which would fade away into darkness and then appear again. Thousands of them could be seen, as if they were dancing in a mysterious harmonic pattern. After a few minutes, Lin Mu reached the source of the pale glow that he observed from far. Finally seeing the object, he found it to be an altar, but it was made up of faint glowing runes and mysterious scripts which were floating in the air, forming the shape of an altar, not having a physical presence itself. Those runes and scriptures look similar to the ones that were carved on the outside of the ancestral temple of Wu Lim City. But aren't they used by cultivators to make chi formations? Why would they appear in my dream? Lin Mu still remembered when he visited Wu Lim City with his father during the New Year's festival two years ago. His father brought him to the ancestral temple to pay their respects, but commoners could not go inside the temple so they paid their obeisance from outside. He remembered his father finding him staring at the carvings on the ancestral temple. His father explained that those carvings were used to create qi formation by qi cultivators, which were used for various things such as fortifying, strengthening, offense, defense and many more. As Lin Mu approached the altar, the various runes and scriptures became more vibrant. Feeling an urge to touch it, Lin Mu placed his hand upon the altar and found it to be solid even though it had no physical body. A moment later he felt a sharp pain in his head, then felt a rush of information in his brain, mysterious chants filled his mind, creating an imprint in it. The Nine Divine Heart Sutras, assimilate the essence of the Nine Paths understand a million hearts as one and ascend the path of the great cosmos. As soon as the chance stopped in his mind Lin Mu found himself back in the old hunting shack. For a moment, his eyes lost focus and he remembered where he was. Checking his body and finding everything normal, he tried to remember the chance that filled his mind, only able to remember one part of them. He tried to remember the rest of the chance but felt as if there was a fog obscuring his memories. I can only remember the first part, the Calming Heart Sutra. Should I recite it? There should be no harm in trying. Lin Mu started chanting the Calming Heart Sutra. At first he felt nothing, but after completing the first chant he felt a calming wave spreading all over his body, as if all his worries were washed away. This incredible feeling lasted a couple of minutes before fading away and the normal sense of self returned to Lin Mu. What an incredible feeling! I felt as if I could sense every part of my body clearly, the blood flowing and the small waves of energy in my muscles. I need to try this again. Reciting the chant once again, Lin Mu felt the calming feeling washing over his body. This time he tried to sense the waves of energy that were moving in his muscles. As he focused on the waves of energy, they intensified and then he felt a great feeling of strength filling his body even more than this morning when he put on the mysterious ring. Ha! Ah, I broke through to the fourth stage of body tempering. What luck, two breakthroughs in one day. This chant is definitely a body tempering technique, and sensing the similar wave of energy when I put on the ring, I guess that is where it originated. This ring is definitely a treasure, or could it be a spatial storage ring that qi cultivators use? Now, Lin Mu did not want to sell the ring at all. Only a fool would let go of an opportunity like this which he knew would only bring benefit to him. As for whether the ring was a spatial storage ring, he could not verify it as he was not a qi cultivator yet, nor did he know how he ended up in the dark place with the altar made of glowing runes and scriptures. 
Thinking that he may be able to fulfill his long-lost dream of becoming a chi cultivator one day, he felt excitement he had not felt ever before and all the feelings of sadness and despair from yesterday's events washed away. If I become a cultivator, I'll be able to buy back my house and I will no longer have to live with my head down. I'll be able to walk proudly with my head held high, and the townsmen will have to treat me with respect. Now knowing the direction in life that he was supposed to walk, Lin Mu was filled with determination. Still, he knew that if he wanted to become a chi cultivator he would need a lot of resources like herbs and fierce beast meat rich in vital energy. He could not hunt beasts which had rich vitality in the forest as he was not strong enough and would simply be courting death. He could trap smaller beasts, but they will only fill his belly and would not be of much use in tempering it. I guess I'll just have to make some traps and catch some small fierce beasts like the blackhorn rabbits and thorn-tailed rats. Even though they don't sell for much, I can still exchange them in town. I'll need to start somewhere so I can save at least until I have enough coins to buy a weapon sturdy enough to kill stronger beasts. Lin Mu went in search of small animal trails where he could set up some traps. Upon finding one, he used the vines growing nearby and some slender, flexible trees to set up snare traps. Now he just had to wait until something was caught. Feeling hungry again, Lin Mu saw the position of the sun in the sky and felt that he had two hours until sunset. Walking back to the apple tree, he plucked a few more apples for his dinner as he doubted whether he would be able to catch anything in the traps, and even if he did, going to the forest at night time would be dangerous even in the outskirts. If a stronger, fiercer beast decided to wander off it could mean his death so he thought it would be better to just eat the apples again. Walking back to the shack, he once again filled the pot with water, put the chunks of apples in them, and set it on the stone stove to cook. While waiting for the apples to cook, Lin Mu decided to chant the Calming Heart Sutra once again. He felt the feeling of calmness spreading through his body, but did not feel the waves of energy that flowed through his muscles increasing, no matter how much he focused, they stayed the same. Ha! Huh. I guess the Calming Heart Sutra only helps if I have the necessary vital energy in my body. It only helped me break through because I had the surge of energy that was released from the ring in the morning. Now that it's depleted, I'll have to train and eat more food to slowly accumulate vital energy. Thinking about the mysterious ring, he lifted his right hand to look more closely at the ring and its peculiar design. As Lin Mu focused on the ring, he suddenly felt a force pulling his hand. Shocked at this, his right hand was pulled towards a direction forcing him to walk towards there. Finally, Lin Mu's eyes went wide as his hand was pulled up in the air where a rift opened and his hand was pulled in. Tens of thousands of kilometers away from Wu Lim City stood a sky-piercing mountain surrounded by hundreds of smaller mountains. Hidden within a mystifying fog, a paradise exists filled with the cries of beasts, enchanting fragrance of spirit herbs, and dense clouds of spirit chi. On the smaller mountains one could see thousands of disciples moving about. Some were training on the fields, some selling precious materials, pills, and weapons in the market, and some silently cultivating in their pavilions. This place was the biggest sect in the great Zhou Empire, having millions of disciples and an area bigger than that of any country in the empire. Even the grand capital being ten times smaller than it. It was also one of the only few sects in the Great Zhou Empire that had Tao Treading Realm Elders cultivating within, and was also rumored to have an immortal ascension stage ancestor living in seclusion. On the tallest peak of the sect stood an elegant palace decorated with auspicious statues, gilded gates, and beautiful ponds filled with charming carps dancing within them. This was the grand palace of the sect, where the sect patriarch and the top elders lived and pondered upon the matters of the sect. Within an enormous hall sat a middle-aged man clad in a white Taoist robe. His long hair was held up with a silver pin, beard well groomed and straight. The man had a calm demeanor, yet his eyes held an imposing presence. Within his left hand he held a jade seal, while in his right he held a scroll. This man was engrossed in reading when the doors of the hall opened and a black-robed elder walked in. The black-robed elder was old, having long white hair and a similarly long white beard, yet not a single wrinkle present on his face. The sleeves of his black robe had gold etchings denoting his rank of a head elder. 
the elder walked towards the sect patriarch who was reading a scroll and waited for fifteen minutes until the patriarch finished reading it. Once the patriarch finished reading the scroll, he held up the jade seal and waves of intense spirit chi erupted from it. Then the patriarch pressed the jade seal upon the scroll, whereupon the waves stopped and on the scroll was left with a golden seal mark made of pure condensed chi. The sect patriarch rolled the scroll and placed it on a table beside him, where six more scrolls lied. Looking towards the black-robed elder, he asked. What did you have to report, Elder Han? Something important I presume, otherwise you would have just sent the regular report with a disciple instead of coming in person. The black-robed elder named Han with a slight smile on his face replied. The patriarch is as perceptive as always, indeed I do have something to report, which I believe you may find intriguing. The common reports are within the scroll, while I wanted to tell you about two matters. The first being the crown prince breaking through to the core condensation realm at the age of twenty years old, becoming the youngest person to break through to the core condensation realm in all the countries of the great Zhou Empire of course not counting the core disciples of the top three sections. In celebration of this, the emperor is organizing a grand festival and has sent invitations to all the noble families in the top sects of the empire. With an unimpressed look, the patriarch spoke. Hmm, that is indeed a cause for celebration for the emperor, especially after the first prince gave up his claim to the title of the crown prince all those years ago, letting the second prince become the crown prince instead. Now that the second prince has achieved this, his position as the crown prince is more secure. I wonder what price the empress paid to let her son reach the core condensation realm this fast. Elder Han gazed at the middle-aged patriarch thinking to himself it's been over thirty years since he became the sect patriarch and yet he still has his youthful inquisitiveness left, it was a right decision the previous sect patriarch made in choosing him over the other candidates, then spoke. The disciples from the Shadow Pavilion reported that the Empress had some dealings with the Rainbow Pill sect. The exact nature of which is unknown. If you would like, I could ask the Shadow Pavilion disciples to investigate more into it. Also, there's going to be a tournament held during the festival for the youths to demonstrate their skills. The sect patriarch now looking slightly interested said. Yes, ask the Shadow Pavilion to investigate more into it. Also, choose some suitable disciples and send an elder as the representative of our sect to take part in the festival as well as the tournament. Taking a momentary pause, the patriarch continued. In the second matter, what about it? Now Elder Han had a serious look in his eyes, and with a stern face replied. The star-catching peak detected spatial disturbances coming from the empire. Having a calm look, the patriarch replied. That is indeed uncommon but I don't understand how it's a cause for concern. Meteors fall every year randomly all over the empire. Even when the star-catching formation is active, it can't attract all of them with the formation. Elder Han answered. It would not matter if it was just a meteor, but we do not know what, or who, this was. It caused a spatial disturbance, but it never even touched the world boundary, just passing through it as if it did not even exist we also could not detect where it fell. The sect patriarch now had a shocked look in his eyes as he knew what it meant if the world boundary was never breached yet there were still spatial disturbances detected. It would be fine if it was just a precious material or perhaps even a treasure, but if it was a person, then the situation would become a hundred times more complex. Elder Han, you know what this could mean, right? If it does turn out to be as serious as we're thinking, we will have to inform the other sects and the emperor. Things have only become calm in recent years. We do not want the unrest this could bring or we would have to cancel a lot of our long-term plans. The patriarch spoke. The black-robed elder heard him with an understanding look and then continued. That would be true, let's hope it does not come to that. In the meantime, I'll ask some elders from the star-catching peak to personally investigate the spatial disturbance as we still do not know where it fell to. Just as Elder Han spoke this, he felt the communication jade hanging on his waist buzz. Holding it in his hand, he listened to the message and then spoke to the patriarch. The disciples at the star-catching peak just detected another spatial disturbance. It was much fainter than previously and we don't know if it was caused by the same thing as before, but we now know that it came from the northern lands. 
After listening to what Elder Han had to say, the sect patriarch pondered for a minute before answering. Send an elder and some disciples to the northern lands to investigate the disturbance. Also send a report about this to the external elders, located in all the regions, and ask them to keep an eye out for such a disturbance in their designated areas, in case the spatial disturbance in the northern lands was an isolated incident, and the actual anomaly that caused it is located somewhere else. Cupping his hands, Elder Han replied. As you command, Patriarch. Should I also issue a common mission to all the disciples of the sect to inform us about any spatial disturbance or anomaly they hear about or observe? Yes, do that too. We may find information about it from some mundane or obscure lead that a disciple may find while they are out of the section. Still cupping his hands, Elder Han continued. Maybe we should also inform our allied sects to keep an ear out for any rumors they may hear? Now with a tired look the sect patriarch said. No, don't inform them just yet. Not at least until we have some more substantial information about it. We must not muddy the waters when there is nothing to gain from it. Elder Han nodded and turned around to leave when the patriarch spoke once more with a gloomy tone. Just in case, tell all the disciples that are going for investigation to leave a wisp of their chi in the Hall of Souls, and issue all the disciples with two distressed talismans, one a common distressed talisman, while the other the sect alerting talisman. If it comes to it, at least we will know what kind of situation we are up against. Elder Han had an understanding look in his eyes, knowing that if a situation as bad as they thought occurs, these measures may be the only way of knowing it, as it could be likely that the disciples and the elders may never return. As you wish, Patriarch. It will be done as you said. Elder Han strode out of the hall towards the mission's pavilion to select which disciples to send for investigations, and also inform the star-catching peak on how to proceed. As the doors of the great hall closed, the sect patriarch placed his hand upon his chin and closed his eyes to think of all possibilities that he could, for he knew that even the smallest of events could bring about a great change. Change could harm his sect, which he wished to avoid, so could keep his promise to the previous patriarch when he was appointed. Lin Mu's hand was pulled into the rift. He felt as if it was dipped in water, yet it did not feel right, it was neither cold nor warm leaving him unable to tell what kind of substance it was. He moved his hand around, trying to pull it back out, but it felt like it was stuck. Lin Mu could move it around inside the rift with no restrictions, but could not pull it backwards. His mind was going crazy at not understanding the situation he was in. Never having seen or heard about such a thing, he thought his hand may become stuck there permanently if he did not pull it out quickly. He tried shouting for help, but was very far from the town and there were no people nearby. He could only hope that a hunter passes nearby and hears his cries. How do I pull my hand out? I can't just keep it like this, and it doesn't look like anyone will come help me anytime soon. I'm much too far from the town and hunters don't come to this section of the outskirts to hunt either, since there aren't any beasts worth their time here. I'll just have to keep trying. Lin Mu was unaware that if any other cultivator saw his condition, they would be even more shocked than him. The spatial rift that was swallowing his hand could have barely even been opened by a Tao Shell Realm cultivator with the help of a spirit treasure and all their strength. Yet, here he was not even a cultivator and had barely just reached the fourth stage of the body-tempering realm. Neither did he know that tens of thousands of kilometers away from where he was, in the Sky Precept sect, the star-catching Peak's disciples were in an uproar trying to find the location of the spatial disturbance they were detecting, since it had already been ten minutes after they detected it and it had not disappeared yet. Lin Mu kept on moving around his hand in the rift, struggling to pull it out, when he felt his fingers touch something being the first time he felt something solid in the rift. He tried to touch the object again but could not find it. It had now been fifteen minutes since his hand had been stuck inside the spatial rift and now he could see that the rift was getting narrower as if it was closing. Getting even more worried, he thought if he did not pull his hand out now it may be severed. Frantically struggling, Lin Mu did all he could to try to save his hand when he felt his hand touch something once again. This time, he gripped the object firmly. As he held the object in his hand, he felt the hold of the spatial rift on his hand getting loose. Taking the initiative, 
he pulled violently one last time with all the strength of his body and finally his hand was pulled out. Looking at his hand, Lin Mu ensured that it was fine and not harmed at all. Scrunching his eyebrows, he looked at the source of his current trouble, the spatial rift, and found it to be closing. The black tear in the spatial fabric slowly mended itself and closed, leaving no trace that it ever existed. Sighing with relief, Lin Mu slumped down on the ground and closed his eyes to rest, for this fifteen-minute-long struggle had thoroughly tired him out. Standing up after ten minutes, Lin Mu dragged himself back to the hunting shack to eat and then sleep. The sun had already started to set and it would not be long until it would be dark. Reaching the shack, Lin Mu picked up the pot that was cooking the apples and started to eat, gulping down every last morsel in the pot. He lied down on the bench thinking about all the things he had experienced today. The day had been full of ups and downs. First, he found himself in a black space where an ethereal altar existed, then received the Calming Heart Sutra which allowed him to break through to the fourth stage of the body tempering stage. He became excited over the prospect of him becoming a cultivator and fulfilling his dreams, when he suddenly found his hand dragging him away and then being swallowed by a spatial rift. He then felt the terror of his hand getting stuck inside the rift and the potential of it getting severed until he felt an object inside it up until he could finally pull his hand out. Speaking about the object, he did not find it in his hand when he pulled it out. It had somehow disappeared with him not understanding where it went. Pushing the thoughts to the back of his mind, he decided to sleep and deal with everything tomorrow. Sky Precept Sect, Star Catching Peak The disciples were working tirelessly to find the location of the spatial disturbance. Even after fifteen minutes, they were not able to narrow down to an approximate location. There were twenty-five disciples sitting at their respective positions on the formation array, controlling it to trace the spatial disturbance, all with sweat on their foreheads after trying their hardest, especially after Elder Han personally asked them to do their best in finding the location. That, too, at the behest of the sect patriarch himself. All of the disciples were the cream of the crop in the sect, having been chosen for their position after rigorous tests. A grey-robed disciple sat at the helm of the array. He had a crest sewed on the left side of his chest showing a mountain with a flat disc above it and a meteor striking it. This was the crest of the star-catching peak. Every disciple had it sewed on their robes, with the head disciple having it in silver thread while all other disciples had it in black thread. Suddenly, the formation array started to dim down, prompting all the disciples sitting on the array to put all their chi into the formation to make it last just a few minutes longer. Alas, it completely vanished and the spatial fluctuations disappeared. The head disciple took a lengthy sigh, looking at all the disciples who were now tired and drained of their chi. A junior disciple stood up from the array and walked toward the head disciple, cupped his hands in greeting, and said, Senior Li Jing, we were unable to find even an approximate location of the spatial disturbance, please punish us for this failure. The head disciple having a look of disappointment, let out a sigh again and said. You all are not at fault here. This was a very difficult task. Whatever the anomaly was, it could evade the world border. It's already a miracle we were even able to keep the formation active for fifteen minutes. I'll report everything to Elder Han myself. I'm sure he'll understand our circumstances. The other disciples also stood up and cupped their hands in gratitude to the head disciple Li Jing. Li Jing pulled out his communication jade and contacted Elder Han about their failure in determining the location of the spatial disturbance and also informed him of the approximate area in which the disturbance may have originated. At this time Elder Han was in the mission pavilion talking to the pavilion elder in charge about issuing the new mission to the disciples and also to select suitable disciples who would be going to investigate the spatial anomaly. Elder Han felt the communication jade hanging on his waist buzz again. He held it and listened to the report from the star-catching peak's head disciple Li Jing and his apology for not being able to find the exact location. Honestly, he was surprised they could even keep the formation active for as long as 15 minutes and still be able to detect the fluctuations. Although all the disciples of the star catching peak were at core condensation, with the head disciple being at the peak of core condensation realm, controlling the star catching peak formation array for so long would have completely drained all the disciples of Qi. 
he told Li Jing not to worry about any punishment and told him that they did well. Even though the approximate area they narrowed down was still three-fourths the size of the northern lands, it would still reduce the time required to investigate the anomaly. Neither Elder Han nor the star-catching peak disciples knew that the formation stayed active for over fifteen minutes not because of the disciples' effort but because the spatial rift that tore open lasted for that long, otherwise they may have found nothing at all. Lin Mu, completely oblivious to the machinations happening tens of thousands of kilometers away from him at the top-tier sect of the Great Zhou Empire, was currently deep in sleep. As Lin Mu slipped into deep sleep, he once again found himself in a familiar dark space. Why am I here again? Lin Mu looked around, but all he could see was darkness. He could not see his arms or legs either. This differed from when he went to the other dark place where the altar existed. At least there he could see his body and even the sky had silver and gray streaks of light moving around, but here nothing existed, only emptiness. Looks like I'll just have to wait till I wake up, same as yesterday. Lin Mu decided to just sit down and wait. While sitting, he felt the ground. It was a plain flat surface, possessing no bumps or grooves. Having no idea whether minutes went by or hours, Lin Mu eventually woke up. Somehow feeling well rested, he stretched and heard a grumble coming from his stomach. Knowing it must have been quite late in the morning, he stood up. Walking out of the shack, he looked up at the sun glaring at the top of his head. He had indeed been late waking up, since it was already noon. Deciding to check on the snare traps he set yesterday, he walked towards the forest. Following the same animal trails as before, he found his traps. Out of the six that he set, two were never triggered, three were broken probably by a bigger beast dash, and the last one was the only one which was successful. Lin Mu found a black horned rabbit hanging upside down from the snare. Pulling on the snare, he found the rabbit to be still alive and moving. With familiarity, he twisted the black horned rabbit's neck, careful not to cut himself on the horn, and ended its life. Before going back to the hunting shack, he reset the snares so that he could catch some more beasts till evening if he's lucky. Now that I have caught a black horned rabbit, how am I going to skin it? I don't have a knife or blade with me. I'll need to figure something out quickly or the meat will spoil fast if I don't drain the blood. While walking back to the hunting shack he picked up a fallen branch and broke it from one end so that there was a sharp edge left. Deciding to drain the blood near the stream and also pick up some apples, he instead changed directions and walked towards the stream. Reaching the stream, he knelt down at the edge of the water and used the sharp edge of the broken branch to stab the neck of the now dead black horned rabbit, letting the blood drain in the water careful not to stain the fur with blood. After no more blood came out from the neck of the rabbit, he pushed his fingers inside the hole and used both his hands to pull it apart. Slowly applying force he ripped away the pelt, turning it inside out in the process. In the end, he was left with a full pelt, leaving behind some fur on the rabbit's head and the bloodied, but hairless, body. Washing the pelt in the water, he left it aside to dry out while he gutted and cleaned the insides of the rabbit. Lin Mu walked to the apple tree and plucked some more apples, then picked up the skinned rabbit and its pelt and walked back to the hunting shack. He hung the pelt outside the shack from a nail and walked inside. Feeling a pang of his growing hunger, he lit the stove and skewered the raw rabbit over it with the same sharp branch he used before to roast it, then sat down to wait for it to cook. He looked at the ring on his right hand and thought about all the events that happened yesterday and wondered whether they occurred because of the ring. Seems like the idiom misfortune accompanies fortune is indeed true. I was able to break through, but I also experienced the scary rift and almost got my hand severed, probably. Then he thought about the object he caught in his hand while it was in the rift, and how it disappeared when he pulled it out. As soon as he thought about that object, suddenly, a wooden slip appeared in his hand. Surprised about where the wooden slip came from, he got a similar texture feeling to that of the object in the rift and determined that it was most likely the same. Is this the object I felt in the rift? How did it suddenly appear in my hand? The only way it would be possible is if this ring is a spatial storage ring. Lin Mu tried to understand how the ring worked. He thought of putting the wooden slip inside the ring and it once again disappeared. Now wanting to bring it back to his hand, he thought of it appearing in his hand and it did. Yes. 
It's indeed a spatial storage ring. Can I store other things in it? I should try. Lin Mu tried storing various objects and then withdrawing them and found that he could do it effortlessly. Experimenting with the ring as if he had found a new toy, time passed quickly until the rabbit was finally cooked. Putting a stop to playing with the ring he started to eat the rabbit, feeling a much greater appetite than ever before. He finished the whole rabbit only leaving behind bones. With his hunger sated, he withdrew the wooden slip from before and opened it to take a look. But when he opened it, he found it to be blank with nothing written on it. Confused with this discovery, he flipped around the wooden slip but found nothing there either. Feeling the texture of the wooden slip, he found it to be of an exquisite quality, like the ones used by high officials and imperial scholars. Having satisfied most of his curiosity about the wooden slip, he stored it back in the ring. Now that there were only bones left of the rabbit, Lin Mu was able to easily break off the black horn from the skull of the rabbit. He stored it in the ring, intending to sell it in the town along with the pelt. He would not get much for it, probably forty or fifty copper coins, but he would be able to save up enough to buy a small knife or dagger so that he can hunt bigger beasts. It had been about four hours since he set up the snare traps. It would take him an hour to walk there and another to come back, but it should still leave him enough time to come back before becoming completely dark. Walking out of the shack, he stored the blackhorn rabbit's pelt in the ring and made his way towards the traps. Halfway to the traps, he felt a buzzing coming from the ring and had a grim feeling of what was about to come. Cursing his luck that he was right, he felt his hand being dragged. Not again. Nuo. This time he was not dragged far, only a couple of feet before the fabric of space tore and a pitch-dark rift appeared. As his hand was sucked inside, he braced his legs ready for whatever was to come. This time he got a significantly different feeling than before. Where before it felt like his hand entered still water, this time it felt like he had dipped it in a fast-flowing river. His hand felt the strong force, yet it stayed steady and did not move. I don't know how long I'll have to struggle before I will be able to pull my hand out, heck I don't even know if I'll be able to pull it out in the first place. But before Lin Mu could start pulling his hand, he felt a rectangular object slam into it. As soon as he felt the object, it got loose and he was able to easily pull it out. It had not even been a minute, and he could pull his hand so quick out this time. Thinking of the object that slammed his hand, a rectangular box, slightly larger than the size of his palm, appeared in his hand. As I thought, whenever I touch or hold something in the rift, it is stored in the ring. But it wasn't exactly the same with the wooden slip. I wonder why. I guess I'll figure it out eventually. Still, my understanding of the ring is better than before. Lin Mu looked at the closing rift and decided to test something. He picked a stone and a stick off the ground. He threw the stone inside the rift with the finesse of a toddler and held half of the stick inside the rift, and half outside. After a few seconds the rift closed, but right before it completely closed the stick that he was holding was pushed out. So if I'm holding something, it would not be harmed. I guess that solves one of my fears. At least I won't have my hand severed if it's pulled into another rift. He looked around to see if the stone was anywhere but could not find it, convincing Lin Mu that it was lost in the rift. Now finally done with all that, he put his attention on the rectangular box he pulled out. It was made of brown wood and had a faint fragrance. There were three cauldrons and a peony carved on the lid of the box. He didn't know what kind of wood it was, but any fragrant wood was usually expensive. He thought he had seen the symbol of cauldrons and a peony before but could not remember where. I can sell this box during next week's market when the traders come. It should sell for a good amount. If I'm lucky, I may even be able to buy a sword or axe with the coins I get. Content with his thoughts, Lin Mu opened the lid of the box and found a small glass bottle placed in the box. He opened the glass bottle and smelled a powerful aroma of herbs wafting out of it. Tilting the bottle on his palm, three yellow pills fell out. The pills had swirls of different shades of yellow on its surface. Lin Mu's pupils went wide for he knew what he held in his hand. These. These are alchemical pills. Aren't these used by qi cultivators? How did they end up in that rift? A new question popped in Lin Mu's mind, 
How did these things end up in the spatial rift, and how was the mysterious ring able to open them? Putting the pills back in the bottle, he stored it in the ring along with the wooden box. I don't know what these pills do, if I can find out I'll be able to use them for my own cultivation. I absolutely cannot reveal these to people. There will always be people who will be greedy and will want to snatch them from me. I must find out what these pills do without alerting others or exposing them. Feeling both excited and slightly worried about his prospects now, Lin Mu walked towards the traps to check for any prey that may have been caught. 